Hey cats, what's happening? Bought these uh, splattering targets. You know, when you when you hit it with a round, it uh, leaves like a little white uh, area, so you can kind of see it from a distance. So I've never used them before, but I thought I'd try them out this time. Uh, practice my shooting. I'm not doing too bad for my age, even though I can't hardly see anymore. What's happening, cats? The weather has uh, kind of dumped on us again today. Uh, crappy day, rain, uh, cold, windy. I was really hoping that uh, I'd be able to take the bike out today. I wanted to go uh, swing over to a buddy's place, but... Uh, not taking the bike out. I've, I've got it all cleaned up and I just don't want it. Uh, I don't want to head out on a crappy wet road, you know, and get it all trashed again. I mean, it will get trashed undoubtedly, but I mean, for all the work I just put into it, I hate to take it out the first time on a wet road and just get it all splattered up. So it'll just sit for today and I'll take the truck again. But I was thinking today, you know, I always got something to think about, something to talk about, uh, was, should I be hanging out at the biker bar? Now, not too far from here, I'd say about three or four miles from here to be exact, it, it's only about a 10 minute ride for me, is the biker bar. And that bar's been there for a long time and back in the heyday when I used to go there, when I was a younger man, it was a pretty hardcore biker bar, and it was a lot of bikes there, a lot of bikers, uh, clubs, and uh, it, if you rode, that was the place to be. The problem that comes with that is when you go to a bar, you obviously drink, and uh, Back in those days, I drank. I drank a lot. It was really nothing for me to put down a 12-pack of beer in one afternoon into the evening, and sometimes more. You know, if I wasn't satisfied, I'd go get more. Uh, to make it worse, a lot of times, <laughs> I was on the bike, and uh, it just didn't bother me at all. Now, at that point in my life, it was like uh, alcohol was an important part of my life. And I lived for that buzz, that high, you know, that, that, that alcohol uh, effect. It kind of numbed the brain and made me feel good and I didn't have anything else to worry about. And uh, life was always a party. And so... Uh, <laughs> That went on for many, many years until I finally realized that, you know, something's got to change because uh, it was, you know, when I look back in retrospect, it did a lot of damage to my life rather than good in more ways than one. I mean, I lost a marriage and I blame that on alcohol almost completely. Uh, I think without alcohol and drugs, you know, the marijuana, my life would be a little bit different today. But that was the road that I chose, and so be it. <laughs> uh, it drastically affected my life. During the rough part of my life when I went through my divorce, uh, things were pretty hard. And uh, at that point, I decided to uh, quit drinking. So I, I pretty much quit drinking completely and was only drinking water. And I was going to the biker bar and sipping on water, but uh, I was getting a lot of flack for that. I mean, for one, I had that, you know, even, even though I was only drinking water, I had to pay for it, uh, and it wasn't cheap. You know, I think they... <laughs> 
they were charging me two dollars for a, a bottle of water and then I was tipping the barmaid a dollar so it was costing me three dollars every time I drank a bottle of water <laughs> which I'm not complaining about that too much I mean that was what I chose to do so yeah that's that's what you get but uh you know, eventually it came to the point, and, and thanks to V, my beautiful wife, she said, you know, this bar isn't really doing us any justice anymore. I mean, this bar has caused us a lot of grief. It's got a lot of bad memories, a, a lot of backstabbing, you know, a lot of situations that, that happened from hanging out there. And so it was decided that, you know what, we're just not going to go there anymore. We're done with that place. And we quit going there. When you stop to think about it, what the heck is a biker bar anyway? It's a place It's a place where the bikers can go, hang out, have some camaraderie. We all got something in common, they all ride. Now, it's not always all bikers that are there. There's some locals that like to go to the biker bar, too. Uh, there's people that, you know, we call them wannabes, <laughs> that wished they were bikers, but they couldn't afford a motorcycle for some reason or another. There was one guy that always went to the bar dressed with leathers, chaps, the, the skull cap, the whole thing, and didn't even have a motorcycle. You know, it was almost hilarious, but that that's the way it, some people are, you know. But anyway, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of more like a social club. You have a lot of friends, and and you go there just to hang out. Well, anyway, to make a long story short, I lost my wife, and uh, pretty much at that point, the only thing that I really had for social activity was to hang out with my biker buddies, those that I still had. Now, you know, back in the transition period of my life, I, I lost a lot of biker buddies, and I don't even know that I'd call them buddies. Uh, some of them were just uh, pretty much backstabbers. So, you know, I, I'll let that, that lay for now. I won't go there, but uh, uh, those that were still in my good graces, you know, I... I still wanted to ride with them, hang out with them. And so, in, in doing so, they'd say, hey, you know what, why don't you stop by the biker bar anymore? Uh, I don't know, yeah, just nah, not really my thing. Well, they said, you know, they got Taco Tuesday and they got tacos that are cheap and they're big and they're really delicious. Not to mention, they have this taco soup that's out of this world kind of like chili, but it's like the tortilla soup with the, the black beans in it and the, the, the more of the taco seasoning. And then they crumble up the uh, um, tortilla chips on top with some cheddar cheese and a glob of sour cream. Oh, man. So, you know, I started going up there on Tuesday afternoon for dinner. And I was very reasonable for the price, and the food was really, really good. Uh, the tacos were delicious, and the soup was amazing. I always looked forward to it. Uh, so I got in the habit of starting to go up there on Tuesdays and have my dinner. Now, the problem with that is that, you know, when you walk into the biker bar, the first thing they want to know is, what are you drinking? And even though I quit drinking per se, I'm still not afraid to have a beer or a drink or a glass of wine. It doesn't bother me. I never thought of myself as an alcoholic, you know. Uh, I don't have an, like an addictive personality. So I can actually stop at a drop of a hat whenever I want and it doesn't bother me one bit. So, even though I don't consider myself a drinker anymore, I'd say, well, you know, I'll take a Coors Light. I mean, that's like drinking water anyway. So, uh, 
you know, the, 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 the barmaid would put a, a Coors Light up for me. Well, then, I, you know, I'm going there all the time. And so I don't even have to ask. I walk in the bar, and before I can even sit down, she's plunking a Coors Light in front of me. If that isn't bad enough, you know, as soon as she sees me tipping the bottle up, she's already setting another one in front of me. I didn't even ask. I mean, it just... It kind of like comes with the territory when you go to the bar and you start to know these people. Uh, I mean, she's just trying to be cordial. She's trying to be friendly. She's trying to do her job. Um, but I really didn't want a second beer. But okay, well, now there's one there, so I'm going to drink that. And there were days where it was getting to the point where I'd finish the second one and be ready to pay my tab and get out of there and she'd plunk another one in front of me. And my buddy would look at me and I'd look at him and he'd say, what the heck, just one more and then we'll hit the road. So then, then I'm, I got this three beers, which doesn't really, you know, get you hammered or anything like that. But it's still, you know, the effects of the alcohol come on. And then I get home and I don't feel like doing anything. I just want to sit down and go to sleep. Um, I get a headache. You know, I, I don't feel good then. I feel crappy the rest of the day. And it's not a good thing. It's not, to me, it's not a good thing. So now <laughs> I have to stop and consider one more time. Do I want to keep going to the biker bar? Is this something that I should be doing. Um, I mean, even Jesus hung out with the prostitutes and the, and the cripples and the, the uh, yeah, so, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Now, the, you know, my buddies are there and they're good friends of mine, but it's, becomes more than that you know that to me the problem is with the with the with the alcohol with the drinking uh, because I don't like to put myself in a situation where I'm making myself not feel good and and that comes with drinking the alcohol you know what's interesting too whenever you go on a biker run whenever you you go on a poker run or or uh, you know a, a fundraising ride a lot of times in fact almost all the time uh, the stops along the way are at an establishment that serves alcohol and a lot of guys are drinking you know you uh, you want a typical poker run uh, there's at least four stops on a poker run and every stop you're going to drink a beer, or a lot of, I, I don't, but there's a lot of guys that will drink a beer, sometimes two beers at each stop. So by the time you're done at the end of the day, by, by the time you've ridden 100 miles and you're at the last final destination, I would say these guys are intoxicated enough to where they could, you know, end up being arrested. And they're not over the top drunk, but you know they're they're probably in a in a place where they probably shouldn't be riding, and, and unfortunately they are. So that's the dilemma that I face with with riding the motorcycle, with hanging out with biker buddies. Not all of my buddies are like that. Some of them don't drink at all, and that's that's good for me. But the ones that do. <laughs> are an influence on and not they're not the influence but it's you know going to the biker bar that's the in, bad influence for me it's not the people it's the alcohol <laughs> so i battle with that and i i really don't know how to deal with it other than just not going uh just putting an end to it and saying okay i'm not going to uh go to the biker bar anymore i'm i'm done with that And I may have to do that, just for my own personal health reasons. I may have to do that and just kind of 
put an end to it. But anyway, until then, I am looking forward very much to riding again. Uh, I was hoping I could get out ride today. In fact, my plan was, okay, if it's sunny today and decent, the salt's finally off the road. I'm going to take the bike out. I'll, I'll hook the camera up and I'll get some video, some ride video. Obviously, that's not happening. Uh, no way. <laughs> I haven't even taken my dirt bike out because I don't want to get it muddy. I All I can do is go up and down the driveway, and the driveway's wet and muddy too, so I, I would get this thing trashed, and, and I've got it in pretty decent shape now. I don't want to... Uh, you know, get it all full of mud and, and messed up again. I can take the Mini out, but I haven't done that either. Because I think I need the exercise, so I walk. <laughs> if I need to get the mail, I'll go down and walk and get the mail. Well, I could shoot today, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm going to uh, head over to a buddy's house. He's... Uh, He's single like me. He's uh, <laughs> had a rough life and like myself, we look for some camaraderie once in a while. So I think I'll go over and hang out with him for a little while today and uh, see what he's up to. Maybe one of these days I'll get him to uh, join me in one of the videos, but... Uh, I, like a lot of my buddies, they're camera shy. They don't, they don't like me sticking this camera in their face. I don't know why. I mean, it, 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 it's just like you're standing here and I'm talking to you. And, and if they were here and you were here, they would talk to you just as comfortably as I'm talking to this camera. But when you put this camera up, all of a sudden people freeze. Uh, I don't know what to say. What should I say? Oh, uh, there's a camera there. And yeah, you just, you just got to get past that. And to me, it's just, it's as if you guys are here with me today and I'm just sitting here chit-chatting with you. The only thing that's missing is your response, which I hope you leave comments down below. Uh, I like to read them. I like to see what your guys' uh, thoughts are on that. Uh, pro or con. <laughs> I read everybody's, everybody's comments. Now, I will continue to keep you guys in my prayers. I, I, I like to tell you that. I like to reaffirm that with you, uh, that I, I do need the prayer as much as you guys do too, so uh, remember me in your prayers. Life is not easy for any of us. We all have our burdens, we all have our cross to bear. And, uh, wow. Yeah. Well, until next time, cats, ride hard and die free. And until next time, I'll catch you later.